Whenever a vehicle goes through an all-new model change, there are two schools of thought that go with it. On the one hand, it's always nice to wait for the all-new model to come out. However, on the other hand, well, there's a ton of deals and discounts to be made on the outgoing model. Now, I would understand that you'd want to wait for the all-new model to come out, especially if you're looking at a lifestyle vehicle. But for workhorse pickup trucks, well, it makes a lot more sense to get those huge discounts and those deals. Now, that school of thought can be applied to Ford's workhorse pickup truck, the Ford Ranger XLT 4x2. Let's do this. Hello guys, I'm Reagan and welcome back to another truck review. If you're new to my channel, I want you to click that subscribe button for your regular dose of Philippine automotive content. If you're my subscriber already, well, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. But first, click that like button. Also, special thanks to Ford Philippines for lending me the Ford Ranger XLT 4x2 to do this review. The Ranger XLT is the base trim Ranger with a little bit more Porma when you compare it to the super base trim Ranger XLS. Now this is a working man's pickup truck, uh, meant to be taken to farms and job sites without really being too fuzzy. Now the good thing there is it's also well priced for its feature set because the Ford Ranger XLT 4x2 automatic has a retail price of only 1,330,000 Philippine pesos. Now that's low enough to compete with the other base trim mid-size pickup trucks from other car makers, but the Ranger XLT 4x2 automatic has a good level of features that keeps it at the head of the pack. Style-wise, the Ranger XLT still has that familiar and macho look that's found in the entire current Ranger lineup. However, the Ranger XLT does away with some fancy bits and niceties like LED DRLs and LED headlights. The XLT here is only equipped with halogen headlights in a projector type housing as well as a pair of halogen fog lights. Now, the, despite the imminent arrival of the all-new Ford Ranger, well, the looks of this Ranger XLT has definitely aged well through the years and can still stand the test of time. Here on the side, you can see more notable differences between this uh, Ranger XLT and the super base trim Ranger XLS. You see, the Ranger XLT gets larger 17-inch blacked-out alloy wheels here versus the smaller 16-inch alloy wheels found in the Super Base Trim Ranger XLS. Now, these 17-inch alloys are the same wheel size that can be found in the off-roady Ranger FX4 Max, but, well, the Ranger XLT doesn't really get the all-terrain tires that the FX4 Max gets. Now, another difference of this Ranger XLT to the base trim XLS are the side mirrors. You see, the Ranger XLT here gets power folding side mirrors pretty similar to the higher variants of the Ranger. Now, as for the mechanical bits of this uh, pickup truck, well, we do get workhorse mechanical bits here because the Ranger XLT gets ventilated disc brakes up front but only drum brakes at the back. Now, for the suspension, well, it's pretty similar to the rest of the Ranger lineup, well, with the exception of the Ranger Raptor, uh, because the Ranger XLT gets double wishbones for its front suspension, and it also has a typical leaf spring setup for its rear suspension. Now, uh, the good thing here, guys, is the ground clearance of the Ranger XLT is also pretty hefty, because the ground clearance stands at 232 millimeters, which is more than adequate to clear most of the obstacles that can be found in your farm, as long as you don't try to drive over a cow or something. 
The Ranger XLT is the workhorse pickup truck in Ford's current Ranger lineup and as such, well, the rear end just gets the bare necessities to help it perform its duties. Now, having said that, guys, well, we only get a candy bar style taillight housing here with the bulb taillights. So if you're looking for LED taillights, guys, well, you'll just have to wait for the all new Ranger to come out. But then, as I said, guys, well, for a workhorse pickup truck, yeah, it doesn't really matter that it only has bulb taillights. Now, the good thing here is this Ranger XLT has a truck bed that can allow it to perform its duties quite well. You see, it has a maximum payload capacity of 1,100 kilos. So that means that you can haul a lot of stuff. And it also has a maximum towing capacity of 3,500 kilos. Now, as you can see, it also comes with a standard bed liner here. And it even comes with a bed light. But it doesn't have that 12-volt uh, outlet here for your, for your trailers and whatnot. And as you notice, it also doesn't come with an assisted lift gate. Now, I would gladly trade that, um, no, that bed light there uh, for an assisted lift gate because, guys, this thing is freaking heavy. The Ranger XLT gets the older yet proven Ford Duratorque engine here under the hood. Now, it's a shame that uh, this motor will no longer make its way to the all-new Ranger uh, because this is one of the more dependable Ford engines ever made. Now, what we have here is a 2.2-liter four-cylinder turbo diesel motor uh, that puts out 158 horsepower and 385 newton meters of torque. Now, all of that power is sent to the rear wheels uh, via a six-speed automatic transmission. Now, since this uh, Ranger XLT is a 4x2 mid-size pickup truck and it's not a 4x4, so it's a little bit lighter in terms of curb weight, well, I was able to get some pretty decent fuel economy figures. On city drives, I was able to consistently get 8.5 kilometers per liter and on a highway run going to this location, to this far, far away land, I was able to get 15.5 kilometers per liter. Now, that's not so bad for an older engine here. And yeah, guys, considering the prices of fuel nowadays, well, who needs that V6 turbo diesel motor that can be found in the all-new Ranger? Yeah? The cabin of the Ranger XLT is basic and functional and just gives you the things that you need. Now, this is one area where the all-new Ranger is head and shoulders taller than this current Ranger XLT because, yeah, we just get all the basic bits here. Now, the, take for example the key, guys. The key of the Ranger XLT is still a basic regular key here, uh, although it looks like a smart key fob if you tuck the key away like this. Now, the seats of this thing are also just wrapped in fabric. I mean, if you're looking for leather upholstery here, you have to go up to the higher trim, which is the Ranger FX4. Now, luckily, the steering wheel is leather wrapped here, and we also have buttons for cruise control. However, I did notice that the safety bits of this Ranger XLT trim is a bit on the... Yeah, it's really, it's really wanting, guys. I mean, as you can see on your screen, it's really just basic, we only get that, and uh, yeah, we don't get driver assist aids here, and we don't even get a reverse camera. I mean, if the, if the Toyota Hilux G, which is the base trim of the Hilux, uh, gets a reverse camera, so yeah, that just shows you just how dated this um, Ranger XLT is. Now, when you look at the gauge cluster here, we get a standard analog gauge cluster there, but at least we have an, an LED screen in the middle for your vital vehicle information. Now, when you move over to the infotainment system, well, I'm happy to see that this Ranger XLT gets the same 8-inch touchscreen infotainment system that can be found in the higher Ranger variants. Now, this touchscreen infotainment system also comes with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which is always a huge plus for me, guys. But as I said, we don't get the image of a reverse camera here because, yeah, we don't really get a reverse camera, at least in the Ranger XLT. 
Now, when you look at the rest of the cabin of this thing, well, it's pretty much it's similar to the layout of the other Ranger variants, and uh, the materials are yeah practically similar. We get hard plastics all around, hard plastics here and there, you know, as expected from a workhorse midsize pickup truck. But at least we do get like softly padded uh, material in the high traffic areas, like. For example, the elbow rest here on the door cards. And yeah, we do get a center armrest here, but still made of hard plastic. Yeah, the thing is, if you're a, a working man with a workhorse pickup truck, yeah, you really wouldn't mind this too much. Now, if you're wondering if this Ranger XLT will pass my clean canteen test, I don't know if you can see it, but yeah, clean canteen's already there. I've done several Ranger reviews already in the past, and in my past Ranger reviews, I can I already proved that yes the Ford Ranger passes my clean canteen test. Now if the cockpit of this Ranger XLT is basic, well you couldn't expect much when it comes to the back seat. Now we only get a 12 volt charging outlet there and uh, this tiny little center armrest here in the middle plus it has two cup holders. However, guys, I have to say this, and uh, yeah, the, when it comes to the absolute space found here at the back seat, well, this Ford Ranger XLT, or any Ranger for that matter, has the most spacious back seat here uh, when you compare it to the other, let's say, mid-size pickup trucks coming from Japanese car makers. Alright guys, so we are now driving the Ford Ranger XLT 4x2 automatic and I've driven like several Rangers already in the current uh, generation in the past and I've, uh, I have a ton of videos of that in my YouTube channel so if you haven't already guys, please subscribe to my channel and uh, yeah, check out those videos. Now, since I've driven several variants of the Ranger in the past, the FX4, the Wild Track, the FX4 Max, uh, I can tell you that the Ford Ranger, this current generation Ford Ranger, has the most comfortable cabin, the most comfortable ride that you can ever get in the local mid-size pickup truck category. Now, I really don't know how Ford does it because, yeah, this thing doesn't really bounce around. I mean, we're going through a dirt trail now and we're not really bouncing around too much and it's not going to rattle your bones. Now, this Ranger XLT's suspension is tuned for carrying heavy loads, guys. But for some reason, I don't even know what sort of magic Ford does with their suspension tuning. I mean, guys, wow. Yeah, this thing will not give you like a, like a, like a body massage or body aches as if you've been massaged by a sumo wrestler. If, let's say, you're going through you know, rough roads like Edsa. It's not gonna do that. And that's something that I really, really love about this current generation Ford Ranger. Now, if you go on social media, well, you'll see that there's some reports or some issues or concerns about, let's say, the transmission of the Ford Ranger. And uh, yeah, if you look uh, and dig further, uh, you'll notice that there is just one recall that's been done on the current generation Ford Ranger and that's for a small batch of Rangers uh, sold in Ford Australia and this is mostly for the 10-speed automatic transmission but it has nothing to do with the actual transmission itself. You see, that recall uh, was for the transmission oil pump which for a small batch of Rangers uh, might have a failure so that's why they issued that uh, recall uh, bulletin. Now, that doesn't affect the six-speed automatic transmission that can be found in this Ranger XLT. And as I mentioned a while back, the Duratorque engine found in this, um, in this Ranger variant is one of the most dependable Ford engines ever produced. And yeah, that six-speed automatic transmission, it's not gonna give you any problems at all. Uh, so guys, if you're looking at like the stuff that comes out in social media, well, it would, it would be best for you to know uh, that, you know, social media can sometimes blow things out of proportion. 
Now, one of the things that I've noticed with this Ranger XLT during the past few days that I've been driving it already is, well, the steering feel is really on the light side. You see, uh, this Ranger XLT is equipped with the electric power assist assembly. So, yeah, Ford really likes to overboost uh, their power steering. And uh, yeah, this Ranger XLT is no different. But here's the thing, guys. Uh, I got to uh, maneuver this around a tight parking area and I had to thank Ford for giving it that over uber uber light steering feel because it made it quite easy for me to get out of that tight parking spot. Well, when you're also going off-roading like we're going through a trail right now, uh, that light steering feel will also help you uh, because that way your arms will not be too tired after going through an off-road trail. Now there's another issue that I'd like to address in this video and that is the durability of the Ford Ranger. You see, American car brands really get a bad rap when it comes to durability. I mean, there's people who are saying that they're not reliable, they're not durable, the quality control sucks and all that. Uh, but here's the thing guys, the Ford Ranger is manufactured in Thailand. It's engineered and designed in Australia. So if you think about it, when it comes to the durability, well, it's, it's just as durable as most of the other mid-sized pickup trucks that come out from Thailand, like, like Toyotas or Mitsubishis and stuff like that, you know? I've met several like owners of the Ford Ranger and they're very happy with their ride. And I've also met a few who are complaining about their cars. The thing is, most of the people who are like complaining about the Ranger, the few people that I met that weren't happy with the Ford Ranger, uh, well, these are the noisiest people on social media. <laughs> so yeah, guys, you know what? When it comes to durability, when it comes to reliability, uh, the car brand itself doesn't really have much to do with it, but it's really more about what kind of maintenance and upkeep that you do to your car uh, that will determine if it's going to be reliable or durable or if it's going to be crappy. So yeah, uh, as long as you maintain your Ford Ranger in the proper manner, it's going to be quite reliable in the long run. Especially on a, an old platform like this current generation Ford Ranger. I mean, this thing has all the kinks ironed out already. Now, as for its capability when it comes to like grassy fields or um, farm trails or grassy dirt trails like what we're going through now, well, this um, Ranger XLT, even if it's just a 4x2 uh, trim, a 4x2 variant, uh, is quite capable, guys. As you can see, we're going through um, a grassy trail here, some dirt trails. So that means that it's, it can easily go to, let's say, your, your farms, these dirt tracks. Uh, just make sure that you don't go into, let's say, deep mud or try to cross a deep river. I mean, guys, uh, you, sometimes you have to also use your head. That if you're just driving a 4x2 truck, uh, don't try to risk going through these areas that only a 4x4 equipped pickup truck uh, can go through. Yeah, but uh, if you're just going through grassy areas like what we're going through now, it's more than capable uh, to go through these kinds of terrain. Now, in case you're wondering what it performs like on uh, civilized roads, uh, civilized streets, and open highways, well, as I mentioned, the Ranger XLT is quite comfortable. Uh, it's not too jittery. It's uh, pretty well composed, uh, much more composed than the other mid-size pickup trucks in the category. So yes, I'm quite happy with how this thing performs on paved roads. If you want a more in-depth um, review of that, well, you can always watch my Ranger FX4 video uh, right here. I think it's gonna come out on top. So yeah, you could also watch that, watch that there. Overall, guys, the Ford Ranger XLT is a highly capable and proven workhorse midsize pickup truck. I mean, if you're not the type who is like an early adopter and just always wants the latest and greatest, you're not that type and you just need uh, a capable, spacious, and comfortable workhorse mid-size pickup truck, well then, this Ford Ranger XLT 
definitely fits the bill. At the end of the day, this current Ranger XLT may be on its way out, but it is still a highly capable workhorse pickup truck. Now, if you're able to snag a good deal on one of these, well, it's worth it to pick one up. Huh. Pun intended. Thanks for watching.